During the mid 17th century, many scientists were studying electrical discharge in glass tubes called cathode ray tubes. In 1830, Michael Faraday conducted some experiments which suggested that atoms may contain particles that have electrical charges. However, the nature of these charges was not understood yet. In 1897, J.J. Thomson made some interesting discoveries when experimenting with the cathode ray tubes. This glass tube is a cathode ray tube. It has a vacuum pump which is used to reduce the pressure of gas inside the tube. This is done because electrical discharge through gases can be observed only at low pressures and high voltages. So this vacuum pump empties almost all the gases out of the tube. But it is impossible to have a complete vacuum. So only the reactive gases that might interfere with the process are removed. Some non-reactive noble gases such as neon, argon, etc. might be added instead. Two thin pieces of metal are placed inside the tube. We call these thin pieces of metal electrodes. These electrodes are connected to a high voltage power source. The electrode connected to the negative terminal of the battery is called cathode and the electrode connected to the positive terminal of the battery is called anode. A hole is made in the anode. This side of the tube is coated with a fluorescent or phosphorescent material like zinc sulfide. This is applied because this material glows when hit by the rays. When high voltage of about 15,000 volts is applied across the electrodes, this causes the metal foil to heat up, which provides kinetic energy for the electrons or negative ions to shoot out from the gaseous atoms that were always present in the tube. The atoms that remain become positively charged as they lose electrons. These negative ions get attracted to the positive anode. Some electrons get absorbed in the anode and some electrons pass through the hole in the anode. They travel in a straight line and hit the other side of the tube where a bright spot can be seen on the coating. As these rays travel from cathode to anode, these rays are called cathode rays. When the electric field is applied perpendicularly to the path of cathode rays, they deflect towards the positive plate. As we know, opposite charges attract each other. This shows that cathode rays have negative charge. When magnetic field is applied perpendicularly to the path of cathode rays, they get deflected towards the north pole of the magnet, which is expected of negatively charged particles. From this, we could understand that the properties of cathode rays are as follows. Cathode rays move from cathode towards the anode. These rays are invisible but can be observed with fluorescent or phosphorescent material. They travel in straight lines, but in the presence of electric or magnetic field, their behavior is similar to negatively charged particles. This shows that cathode rays consist of negatively charged particles called electrons. The characteristics of cathode rays or electrons do not depend on the material of electrodes. Whether we use steel or metal or electrodes of any other material, the electrons will still have the same behavior. The characteristics of cathode rays or electrons do not depend upon the nature of gas present in the cathode ray tube. Their behavior will be the same whatever gas is used. From this, we understood that atoms had electrons in them. Using this experiment, J.J. Thompson calculated the accurate measurements on the deflections of electrons in the presence of electric and magnetic field. From this, he was able to find the charge to mass ratio of electrons. Magnitude of charge on an electron is given by E and mass of electron is given by m. So E by m was found to be 1.758820 into 10 to the power of 11 coulomb per kg. Later in the year 1909, R.A. Millikan did an experiment called the oil drop experiment, from which he found the charge on the electron to be 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulomb. The present accepted value of electrical charge is 1.6022 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulomb. He found the mass of electron by combining these results with Thomson's value of E by M ratio. The mass of an electron was found to be 9.1094 into 10 to the power of minus 31 kg. In 1886, Eugen Goldstein performed an experiment known as the canal ray experiment. This led to the discovery of protons. This experiment is similar to the cathode ray experiment. The difference here is that instead of making a hole in the anode, Holes are made in the cathode. 
When high voltage is applied, electrons shoot out of the gaseous atoms. As the electrons are not present in the atom anymore, these atoms turn into positively charged ions which are then accelerated towards the cathode due to the opposite charge. These positive ions pass through the holes in the cathode and hit the tube behind the cathode. A glow can be observed on the coating. As the positively charged particles pass through the holes in the cathode, they are called canal rays. From this, the properties of canal rays could be understood as follows. Unlike cathode rays, canal rays depend upon the nature of gas in the tube. The charge to mass ratio of the particles also depends on the gases present in the tube because different gases have different mass. The behavior of these particles in the presence of electric or magnetic field is opposite of electrons. Some of the positively charged particles carry a multiple of fundamental unit of electrical charge. This means that a positively charged body may not contain just a single positively charged particle. It may contain multiple of positively or negatively charged particles and the overall charge may be positive because of excess of positive charge. This experiment showed that E by M ratio of positive rays depends on the gas in the tube. Hydrogen was used as its mass would be the lowest. Because the mass is small, it would have a high E by M ratio. Thus, the name proton was given to the hydrogen ion which was formed by losing an electron from the hydrogen atom. So, by 1920, scientists thought that the structure of atom was complete with the discovery of electron and proton. The mass of an electron is so small that we can ignore it when calculating the atomic mass. But, if that is the case, mass of protons should be equal to the mass of atoms. However, that was not the case. For example, if carbon has 6 protons, its mass should be 6 times the mass of hydrogen atom which has 1 proton. But it was 12 times the mass of hydrogen. There had to be something missing in the calculation, some missing factor. Ernest Rutherford was the first scientist to predict that there had to be some neutral particles present with protons in the nucleus. In 1932, neutrons were discovered by James Chadwick. He performed an experiment where a beryllium nuclei was bombarded by alpha particles. Some radiations were emitted. Unlike cathode and anode rays, these rays did not deviate in the presence of electric and magnetic field. This confirmed that these particles were neutral. James Stadwick named these neutral particles neutron. In the next video, we'll take a look at Thomson's and Rutherford's atomic models. Thanks for watching.